you finished your management career a short spell at Huddersfield. Uh, we've obviously seen you plenty of times on our screens doing punditry for certainly Man United TV, which you, I'm sure you enjoy. Um, but you still live locally in Stoke-on-Trent and obviously here we are now at an uh, institution, I would call it, in, in Stoke-on-Trent that takes your name, um, the Macari Centre, Street Retreat. How did all that start? Not a lot of people know how that um, really got off the ground. Yeah, I never, I never ever thought about um, homeless people. Got to be honest, I never thought about homeless people. Um, and I was, and I was sitting at my home one night, um, reading in the local paper, reading in the Sentinel about uh, a debate going on between various people how many homeless people there were in Stoke and Trent and was it getting worse or was it getting better? Um, is it any better or worse than any other part of the country? <laughs> and then I just thought, um, right, I'll, um, I'll take a trip up to Hanley and have a look and see for myself if what the numbers are reported in the paper, if that's true or is it whatever. Um, and I went up to Trinity Street where the Royal Bank of Scotland was and um, parked my car around the corner from there, walked up Trinity Street and, and I saw four or five homeless people sitting in the doorway of the Royal Bank of Scotland. And then across the road was near the Australian bar, which is not there anymore, I don't think. Um, there was an opening there and there was probably six or seven people in there. I went across there and saw them and started having a chat with them. I think there was about four Stoke supporters and two Port Vale supporters. So I spent the next half hour agreeing with everything the Stoke lads were saying and disagreeing with the Port Vale supporters. But my conversation to them was, what you're doing here is a no way you can go, where you can put a roof, where there's a roof over your head, keep you out the rain, keep you out the wind, keep you out the cold weather when it comes. How did you get here? Why are you here? And because I, I had no idea I think a lot of people are the same, when you've got a house and when you've got a job and when you've got everything going for you, you tend to forget and overlook people that are not so fortunate. Um, so they told me their story and it, it ranged from um, somebody in a business and that business going uh, crash and then they're out in the streets because they can't afford mortgage, um, marriage breakup, um, which is a f a quite a common thing that marriage ends and somebody goes out in the street because there's kids involved and the courts have decided that the, the male or the female can't stay at home for whatever reason. Um, uh, drugs, obviously. Drink, obviously. And an assortment of all those things, plus other, other things, uh, have, have played their part. And Foolishly, I probably just thought you know, homelessness is down to drugs and alcohol. But I learned that night it wasn't. And um, went home and thought, right, that's opened my eyes a little bit. Um, in the position I'm in, which, as you said, I've played for the teams that I've played for and I've managed the teams that I've managed and, and I've done what I've done. I've been on television. Can, is there any way I can help? Can I pull a few strings? Well, I thought, well, of, of course I can, and I know quite a few people. And um, one person was a journalist that used to come down, along with the other journalist at Stoke, Anthony Mundy, who was on the council, um, who a couple of years ago was a Lord Mayor. And I thought, well, I know Anthony, I'm going to go and ask him if he can um, get the council to give me a building that I'm going to open up. and. Um, bring the people that I've seen tonight off the streets and others that I, I knew were there. Because when I went around Hanley, I probably, at the end of the night, came across about 40 people. And I thought, well, that's 40 too many. And um, I had a word with Anthony and went round Stoke with a, a group of councillors. Ended up coming here, which I thought, well, that isn't great. But 
it was going to get homeless people off the street. And I thought at the time, if I can build on this and uh, start off in here and eventually move on to, to something that's a, that's a bit better than this. Um, but anyway, I came in here and um, quickly took a liking to it. It grew on me. Uh, the building itself isn't fantastic, but the object of, of coming here was to get the people that I'd seen off the street. And we, um, we started with 14 people. Um, and we've now got, f I think it was 46 in last night. So over the last few years, we've, we've built up the numbers. People come here and I now see the benefit of the fact that we've got this building. I now know a lot more about um, homelessness and homeless people. Uh, and I know a lot more about if we hadn't had a good response from, from the council at the time and from the people of Stoke-on-Trent, which is probably the main thing, we wouldn't still be here. We need support. Everybody that, um, that um, runs something like this cannot survive without the support of, of the public. Uh, we've had that support when we opened. I wasn't too sure where it would um, start to slowly disappear. But uh, the longer we're here, the more support we're, we're getting. Um, and to do anything and do it successful, like my career was for me, you need that help in the, in the beginning to eventually establish what you're trying to achieve. And we've had that help from the public. We're never short of clothes. Uh, we're never short of food. Um, money, you could always do with more money. But we, we'll, we'd get by on, on what we get uh, from the council. So um, I look now and people say to me, how's it going? And it's one of those questions I never know how to answer because I'd have preferred to go from 14 people to no people. And I'd have, thought, I'd have said, well, that's, it's been a success, but we've gone from 14 to 44. Um, so how's it gone? The fact that we've got 44 at the moment and could take more if we had the space, tells me that um, it was a good decision to open the centre. And um, as I say, we wouldn't still be here if we didn't get the help from uh, the other people round about. But in this day and age, it's, it's sad to see that uh, there is that amount of, of homeless people needing help. And um, I've just come across the, the, um, the food bank, which which I, I didn't know a great deal about until they did a presentation at the council. And when I realised that there's families in Stoke-on-Trent that need support, need to go to food banks, that is something I never ever thought would happen in this area. I never thought it would happen in most areas, but that has certainly happened in this area. So food banks need support and any chance we get to, do, to help with that support we will do it because it's an ongoing thing. Um, so um, it started like football as a challenge. It started um, uh, like my career to start with. I didn't know a great deal about how it was going to develop um, as a player and, and, and as a manager. Um, but this has worked out for me. Uh, this has worked out. This has worked out great. Because I think um, I think we've achieved something here that w that's helped people. Well, I know we've achieved something here that's helped people because we've had people leave here that have got married. Never thought that would happen. And I think if you speak to most people, they would never think it would happen that two people living here would eventually get married and move on and have a child. Um, because people just believe it's about drugs and alcohol. But it's, as you say, it's not just a case of giving them a roof over their head and something to eat and some clothes. No. It's about, it's about the whole support network. Yeah. It's giving them... Um, Four meals yeah, a day we give them. Advice, service. It gives them a, yeah. an address where they can hope to yeah. build their lives and move forward. And obviously they do need help. That's why they're here. Some obviously will take your advice. No different to footballers. Some won't. Um, <coughs> some will improve, again like footballers, some might go backward, but the ones that um, 
the ones that do improve and go on and leave you and make something or start to make a life that's brilliant it, it gives you a real gives you a real kick um, I never get too excited too soon because I realize they can get off to a great start and everything goes backward again and they're back to where they started so if I don't hear from them in a, a in a over about a 12 month period I'm delighted um, if I do hear from them and they are progressing and I'm even more delighted if I hear from them and they've gone backwards and they want to come back here I don't like that but a lot do come back and I like that as well because it means we've treated them okay we've looked after them our door is is always open for them and um, to do what they do which is wake up every day no job a majority of them no job um, no prospects no money in the pocket <coughs> and go out there and survive and have to do it because of the position they're in it takes a bit of guts so I like that type of player and that's why I'm probably still here is I like that type of person that's got to go and do something and be a bit gutsy about it and I've told them in no uncertain terms that because we clothe them because we feed them four meals a day with the generosity of of various organisations that supply the food for us that um, there's no begging because they're not homeless they've got a roof over their head they're getting plenty of food um, so I, I don't want the begging in Hanley carry on and if, I, if I'm informed by the police that um, that's happening then I let them know that I, I'm not too happy about it but everything else about them they're a, they're a bit like the footballers I like to have they're gutsy, they're determined, but anybody that wants to, um, you know, I was even thinking about giving them some money. If they do end up in Hanley, go and buy them something in McDonald's, go and buy them a coffee, go and buy them uh, a meal of some kind. They do not need money because the, ones, the lads we've got here and the girls we've got here, they will, they, they would just go and spend it on drugs. It's not an if, it's not a maybe. That's, that's what would probably happen if you get that was the temptation would be there and some some would go and do that but we're still here we're hoping to move on to bigger things um, you've had a look around the center you come up with a stoke you yeah, I was going I was going to move on to that we had a, a recent visit from our uh, our under 18 side yeah you brought along some donations what was that from uh, like from your point of view to enable you to in a way open their eyes to well uh, Youth team manager Richard, Richard Walker, rang me and, and I thought he was ringing about my grandson who plays for him and I thought he's telling me what to tell him now. Um, but it wasn't about my grandson, it was about his youth team who he wanted to bring here, maybe to open their eyes, maybe to let them see, you know, um, the place, what it's like and all the other things. So I had no hesitation in saying, great, love to see you want you to come up, they came up as you know, um, took took them around the place, I think some were a bit, a bit shocked, <laughs> uh, and some were open mouthed at, at, um, at the fact that it is what it is here and, and they've got a home and they've got a, a life as a footballer that will, that will, if they make it, bring rich rewards and, and so I think it was, I enjoyed the day, I think it was great for them, uh, Richard and his coaching staff were here, I think they, they thought it was worthwhile and um, I just had my little input just into saying to them that it's a wonderful opportunity for them in football nowadays as a youngster, you won't be starting on £12.50 I told them, like I started at Celtic, you won't be jumping to £50 like I did at Celtic and you won't be turning down £55 a week like I did at Celtic and if you make it and you move on um, well you won't have to move on I said you won't be my highest wage at Manchester United was £400 you won't be having to worry about your highest wage at Stoke City being £400 that won't be it so it, it, was, a, it was a good day for us all 
I think we got a message through to the youngsters that, look at this, you've got a golden opportunity and um, don't miss out, take it if you've got that, if you've got that chance. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for speaking with us, no Luke. Problem. And we wish you all success in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.